Coach Herm Edwards on the phone. Thanks to McLean Food Service. Okay, Coach, the breaking news earlier today, we thought it was going to be all about Geno Smith. Instead, it's all about EJ Manuel in Buffalo, who has been benched for Kyle Orton. What is the thought process of bringing in Kyle Orton at this point in the season, Coach? Well, obviously, uh, when they acquired Kyle Orton uh, here before the season really got started, you knew that uh, if Geno, I mean, if EJ Manuel was going to struggle, that Kyle Horton is going to be inserted in the lineup. And I think the last couple of weeks, um, he's done that. And with that being said, Kyle Horton's a guy that has a lot of veteran uh, ability. Um, it feels like he's caught up now to run the offense. And, uh, you know, Buffalo's trying to win. I mean, that coaching staff is, is fighting to try to win games. We have new ownership, obviously. Um, a lot will be said if these guys are retained next year. Uh, if they win, they will be probably. If not, um, new ownership, no telling what he might be thinking. So this is where they're headed. Is this reactionary to the new ownership, Herm? Do you think if if the, if the it's a more stable franchise, does EJ get more time to develop? Well, I don't know that so much. I just think it's it's the fact that when they brought in Kyle Orton, I think we all have to be naive if, if knowing that why did they bring him. I mean, they didn't bring in Kyle Orton for nothing. I mean, EJ was struggling in the preseason. We saw the Buffalo Bills play in the preseason. They weren't very good on offense, and I think the whole thing with EJ Manuel was this, is that they wanted to make sure that they didn't put him in a position where he had to do a lot, but that's not always true in games. Um, you make decisions as a quarterback, and when you make those decisions that um, end up costing games, that becomes costly, that becomes concerning for your staff. And right now, they just feel like it would be better for him probably to learn on the sideline and put Orton in the lineup and try to win some football games. Do you believe that, Coach? Can you learn on the sideline as a quarterback? No, no, you have to play. Uh, you have to play. And um, right now, um, he's struggling when he plays. I mean, when this team can run the ball and play good, if you look how they've won of late, when they won games, they're two and two football team. But if you look at the games they won, take a look at the attempts of passes. They, they didn't really go over 25. Uh, in other words, they ran the ball very well. They played good defense, played good special teams. They win two games. When he's asked to throw 30 or more times, he's going to make some bad decisions with the ball. And he's done that in those games. And so now uh, they're going to give the ball to Kyle Orton and, and, and let Kyle Orton play quarterback and, and try to win some games. He's Coach Herm Edwards. Joins us every Monday at 515. We replay it back at 630. Thanks to McLean Food Service. It's Armin in the back, 104.5 the team. And Coach, let's get to the other quarterback debacle in New York. If you're the head coach of the Jets, which you have been before, shout out, do you bench Geno Smith right now for Michael Vick? Boy, uh, I mean, not now, but but I think eventually if this if this uh, uh, continues to happen, in other words, uh, right now he, he's turning the ball over, similar to what he did last year. Uh, and and uh, when you look at uh, what this team's about, it's about playing defense and not turning the ball over. They, they run the football on offense, uh, already seven turnovers in four games. Uh, that's That's starting to add up, and that's starting to lose games. So, you're going to probably give him another week or so, and then from there, if you continue to lose games, you're going to have to make a game. Coach, Geno Smith lost his cool, swore to fan. If you're his head coach, what do you do? Do you pull him aside? How do you, how do you get this guy's head back on the field? Yeah, obviously, and that's going to be part of it, um, especially in, you know, not, not, not just especially in New York, but in New York, it, 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 it gets ramped up some, and he's struggling, and they're losing, and that's part of it. He's going to have to keep his composure. I like what he said. He came out and apologized, but you can't lose your composure at any point, no matter what's happening. Uh, you're the quarterback. I mean, you're gonna you're gonna get those kind of uh, you know you're gonna get yourself in those kind of situations because once you start talking back at the crowd, then it becomes every time you play a home game and they're gonna get after you if you're playing bad. So just tune out, focus on your job, and uh, don't worry about the fans. So Coach, there was a point after watching the game yesterday that I, I was more frustrated with the play calling than with the quarterback. I mean, two weeks ago, Marty Morningwig said, I put too much on Geno. It was too complicated. Yesterday, uh, the guys on TV were going as far as saying, man, this is way too simplistic. It, it looks like Marty Morningwig doesn't know his quarterback when, when we watch the game. Well, I think, I, I don't know about if he doesn't know the quarterback. I, I think that there's been situations that he probably doesn't feel like uh, he wants to overwhelm him uh, with things, uh, try to make it real simple. But, hey, you know, yesterday on the fumble, um, the one thing that Gino has to realize is uh, when there's a when there's a, a blitz, uh, he has to understand where the hot is and get rid of the ball. And uh, it came from the left side. 
uh, from you know from his right if he didn't see it and he held on to the ball too long and that that, that extra that extra rusher no one can block it. We basically called that's the quarterback's guy. In other words, no one's blocking that guy. Uh, we don't have the protection to block it because of what we call, but we have an option for you to get rid of the ball. And if you watch Gino, he held on to the ball too long. He never saw those guys coming. He never saw the blitz coming from the opposite side, and they got him. So, you know, those are the things when you're the coach. This is why sometimes you simplify things, okay? Uh, regardless of what people think and what they look at, you know, it, it's easy to look at things, but also you don't understand, uh, you know, the – what you're asking this quarterback to do in the situations that he's put in sometimes. Coach Herm Edwards on 104.5, the team, but Coach Michael Vig behind him is a turnover machine as well. He's not much better in that category, if better at all, in regards to replacing Geno Smith. Well, yeah, you make a great point. I think the thing that, you know, Michael Vick brings, and, and this is what you like about Michael Vick, he's electric. You never know what he's going to do, you know, because he can make a lot of plays with his legs now. That has gotten him in trouble. Now, he's not the Michael Vick he was five years ago by any stretch. You know, he's not the same runner. He can run, but he would prefer not to. But you're right. I mean, he's been a guy that's turned the ball over as well. And, you know, when you play offense the way, obviously, the Jets do, and a lot of teams, you're not a high-powered offense, you can't make errors. You can't turn the ball over and give your opponent possession. That puts too much of a strain on the defense. And if you look at his defense right now, you know, they're scoring about 20 points a game offensively, uh, the Jets, and they're giving up about 23. And so you're going to be in tight ball games. So this is why you can't turn it over. Coach, there's, there's been some rumblings already. Is Rex Ryan on the hot seat? Well, I think anytime you're coaching, obviously you're always on the hot seat. And, and from last year, uh, they were 8-8. Eight and eight, And obviously there was a lot of conversation about should Rex continue to be the coach with the new GM and, all this type of thing, and, and I think Rex understands that, you know, that he's got to win some games, and, and this is a team that has the ability to be a playoff team, uh, and, uh, you know, he, he understands that, but, you know, coaches don't worry about that. I mean, we make more of that than what coaches think. You know if you don't win in two years, uh, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. That That's part of the deal when you sign on. You never worry about being on the hot seat. You're just trying to get your team prepared to win a game next week. Coach Herm Edwards, every Monday at 5.15, we play it back at 6.30 right here on 104.5, the team with Armin and LeVac. Coach, uh, Antonio Allen last week said, you know, Calvin Johnson has weaknesses. We're going to exploit those. Obviously, Cal- Calvin was a non-factor in the game because of his injury. But in regards to the Jets and what they say to the media, in 2014, if you're a head coach, uh, are you concerned about trash talk? Does trash talk work? Does it have an effect on the opposition? <laughs> Well, if it's a weak-minded opposition, so most of the guys in this league are not weak-minded, that's what I found out. And it's, it's one thing to talk, it's another thing to back it up. And I've always told players, if you're going to sell wolf tickets, make sure you can, you can cash them in. You know, it's, it's like going to the auction without any money. Don't go to the auction if you don't have any money. And uh, if you're a player and you want to talk, that's one thing, but you better back it up because when you don't back it up, it looks bad. And, uh, and then I'm going to tell you from that, that point on, you need to be quiet. Coach, uh, Big Blue looking pretty good right now. Arm and I had a little bit of a debate going on. We we kind of all agree that the Eagles are the best team in the NFC East right now. I think the Giants are the second best team in the NFC East. Armin says I'm insane. Where do you fall? Don't forget them Cowboys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. As we as we as we sit here wow. and we start debating, is it the is it the is it the Giants or is it the Eagles? Let me tell you something. These Cowboys have won three in a row, and regardless of what we say, uh, you know what? Yeah, they got a great offensive line now. They really do, and they they can run the ball with Demarco. Now Demarco's a fumble, he's a fumble, uh, a fumble type guy. He didn't fumble last night, but this offense uh, is, is generating a lot of points. Uh, they can control the game. They got a great. They they got a great offensive line. Tony Romo is, is starting to get well. Now, this is, these are the Cowboys. I get it. They are the Cowboys. As soon as you start talking good about them, they go the other way. But I think it's a, I think it's a three-team race. I really do. The Eagles uh, yesterday, uh, they were banged up with their offensive line. They couldn't run the football. They got exposed yesterday. They didn't score a touchdown, guys. They scored That's touchdowns right. on special teams, a return, and obviously a, 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 you know, a, a block kick. So when you think about 21 points, it wasn't by their offense. And so yesterday, uh, is that is, is that kind of going forward? Because if you don't get these offensive linemen well, they can't run it. 
when they can't run it, they're not as explosive because everything is, is off the play action. So the Giants, obviously, they're playing a lot better. Their offense got in tune. That helps their defense. The runner's running well. Eli is starting to get the ball out of his hand. And so now, you know, week one, uh, week two, this division looked like it was a runaway with the Eagles. And everyone was saying, well, the Giants, you know, and we talked about it when the season started. What did I say? I said, hey, uh, week three or week four, they're going to come. They're gonna, we'll go, this offense will get into the groove, and they'll figure it out, and they're starting to play better. And lo and behold, uh, the Eagles all of a sudden now are 3-1, and one, and the Cowboys – Guess what? A three and one. How about that? How about the Cowboys? <laughs> the Giants are two and two, so it's going to be interesting. Yeah, it's much more wide open. The Giants and and, and uh, the Cowboys are going to have a chance in this NFC, something we didn't see coming. And, Coach, something else we didn't see coming was this Ben McAdoo Giants offense is progressing, possibly at a faster rate than what we thought. What is the offense doing so well through four weeks that they've been able to be successful at this rate? Well, I thought they really improved against Arizona. And they lost that game. Uh, when you think about what happened in that game, a lot of drop balls, turnovers, they had some fouls. But Eli was getting the ball out of his hand. And that's, that's the whole key with this offense. I think these guys have, have kind of realized it's a timing situation. It's not about throwing the ball down the field 20 yards anymore. It's more about five-yard passes, continue to let the chains work, and then we'll progress on the long plays. The running game is balancing them out. This is helping the offensive line. Because the ball's out. They can't get to Eli. Because it's out too fast. If you watch the game, and it's, it's, it's two and a half seconds. The ball's gone. It, it is out. Guys are catching it, running, keeping in front of the chains. The run game is helping. This also helps your defense. Now your defense is sitting over there resting. And so all these, they're kind of playing together. Defense is taking the ball away. So they're, they look like a team now where week one, everybody was scratching their head. And you're going, are you kidding me? Why did they put this off in 10? They're struggling. They look awful. Well, now it's to look pretty good. Coach, you you know, of course, head coach Jets, the, the Chiefs, when you've got a number one draft pick like Odell Beckham Jr. sitting on the sideline with a dinged-up hamstring, does that just drive you insane because you can just already – you want to play with that new toy, you want to see him run down the field and make big catches? As a head coach, how frustrating would you be right now? How frustrated would you be at Odell Beckham Jr.? Well, I don't know that so much as that you understand it because most of these young guys, especially – Young receivers, uh, you know, they don't realize how much work it takes to be a professional football player, and what all the things you have to put in college. You know, half the time, hey, you know, you're a better athlete than the guys you play. Now it's about learning a new system. You've had a hamstring uh, that keeps you out of the ability to practice, and that kills guys. Th- this kid is so far behind right now, guys. He is a month behind. He's not catching up. Okay. This season is almost a waste. I've seen this. This happened with me with Dwayne Bowe. Uh, you know, young receivers, they get hurt early and they can't practice. Guys, they, they never catch up with the playbook. And so he's going to be played sparingly as the season continues to grow. He'll get, he'll start, they'll start catching him up a little bit. But don't look for great leaps and bounds out of this guy when he comes back. He's way behind right now. You know, he's, he's a skilled guy. They'll find a way to get him the ball. But, but as far as knowing the playbook and knowing what to do, no. Yeah, but, Coach, you got you got the Falcons coming up after that, the Eagles and the Cowboys. With that stretch, like, how important is it to have that, that home run hitter on the outside? I mean, if we see one weakness with this offense, they can't go down the field. Well, you know, it helps, but how much are you going to ask of the guy? I mean, right now he's about a 15-play guy, in my opinion, which is fine because, you know, as you just mentioned, he can catch it and run with it. I mean, he can make explosive plays. But right now, he's probably struggling to line up. <laughs> you know, I mean, the poor guy. I mean, his head, because you know, this offense can keep revolving. Every week it changes. This is a memorization offense. This is not, this is not a blackboard offense. It's just, this is memorization. You've got to remember things. And, and so it's one thing to do it in the classroom. It's another thing to go through at full speed and then in the game. Now, also, we remember, you've got to remember, but also you've got to look at the coverage. Now you've got to read the coverage. You've got to figure out what to do. So, I think they'll get him in situations where it's simple, simplify it for him because you got to get him in the game so he can touch the ball because he's, he's, he's dynamic when he has it in his hand. Coach Herm Edwards brought to you by McLean Food Service and Coach the Bills fall to the Texans yesterday. When we talk about all-time defensive ends, J.J. Watt, what kind of show is he putting on right now in the NFL? 
Well, he's worthy of, and I always felt this way, he's worthy of the contract that he received. And obviously he's, uh, he's playing at the MVP level. And you think of the Texans right now. Um, they're three and one. They're leading the division. Uh, and they're gonna they're gonna be battling with the Colts because I, I think at, at the end the Colts are probably a better football team just because of the quarterback. Uh, now, if they, can you imagine if the Colts quarterback was with his defensive sex ass? Hmm. <laughs> kind of interesting, wouldn't it? Yeah. It would be kind of yeah. It'd be really kind of interesting. Uh, if you just if you took JJ Watt in the defense, say you go play for the Colts. Okay. In the Colts defense, you go play for the Texans. Woo-wee. Wouldn't be a lot of fun playing the Colts. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, uh, tonight we wrap up the first quarter of the season. Uh, New England's going to play Kansas City. As you look at, at the at, – everybody's got almost four games in the books. Who who surprised you? Who's your biggest surprise? The Saints maybe not that good or or maybe the fact well, that Giants were able to adapt, something yeah, like that? You, you, you mentioned it. Uh, the Saints are really struggling. They're, they're struggling. and They got exposed again last night. Um, they, they're struggling. Uh, offensively, they're kind of very inconsistent. They drop a lot of balls. Um, now they're hurting a little bit as well, but everybody's hurting. Their defense has not been what we thought they were going to be. Uh, so that's a team. But, yeah, it's, it's four games in. We'll, we'll see. Uh, Arizona, I think, is a very good football team. Uh, they're playing with a backup quarterback. They've won two football games. They're very consistent. Uh, Cincinnati Bengals, good football team. Baltimore. It's shown that they're going to compete against Cincinnati in this division. I think it's a two-team race with Cincinnati and uh, Baltimore in that division. Uh, San Diego. I like San Diego. I said that after week two, guys. I like San Diego Chargers. I like Phillip Rivers right now. If you're picking an MVP in offense, he's your guy. you got to take Phillip Rivers. They're playing hot. Uh, they, you know, they're, they're, really, they're really playing well. Uh, you know, Green Bay's Green Bay. I mean, Aaron Rodgers told everybody to relax, and then he went out there and put 38 up on Chicago, so I guess you better relax when Aaron Rodgers says relax. Uh, so, you know, Green Bay's Green Bay. Uh, I think that division, you know, Detroit right now is leading it, and Detroit looks like uh, they're, they're playing more consistent. We'll, I still don't – I still worry about Detroit in December. Can they win in December? They always do this. They get off of these hot starts, and then in December they just kind of become the Detroit Lions. You know, that become the paper lines, and, and you know, and, and and so I'm hoping they don't, but we'll see. But it's but, but it's early. Big game for big game for New England tonight, guys. Big game. They could lose this game against Kansas City. That would be interesting because then that division becomes really interesting when you think about the AFC East. How because, so? How can New England get exploited by Kansas City, coach? Oh, Kansas City could beat the Patriots because they can run it. Tom Brady really right now doesn't trust anybody but Gronk and Amendola and Edelman. He has no outside presence. They run the ball a lot better. But uh, Kansas City at home, uh, this, will, this town will be on fire tonight, guys. You wait. When you watch this game tonight. If they get behind, if New England gets behind, it's over because they can't block them. They can't block Tom Bahali and, 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 and Houston and, and, D, and D Ford. They, they can't block them. And they got no outside presence. They have no one that scares you outside numbers. So this is a game, if you're in New England, don't get behind. Because if you get behind, it's, it's going to get bad. Coach Herm Edwards joins us every Monday at 515. We replay it back for you at 630. And, of course, Coach Herm Edwards brought to you by McLean Food Service. They have been around for 120 years. They have no debt. They are seeking Class A drivers with 50,000 miles experience and a safe driving record. Great place to work. LeVac and I have been there. We went on the tour. The employees love working there. Average first-year pay is $60,000. Company paid hotels and meal allowance. They have new tractors. 401k match of $1.75 for every $1 contributed. Healthcare benefits from day one. McLean Food Service, if you're looking for a job as a Class A delivery driver, is where you need to go. Thank you very much, McLean Food Service. Your home for Class A delivery drivers. Armin and Levac, 104.5, the team. And Coach, thank you for your time. I know you're traveling this week. Please travel safe, and we'll talk to you again next Monday. Okay, man. Thank you now.